A very common machine learning method is that that's called naive Bayes or naive Bayes classification. In fact, some of the most well-known and celebrated applications of Bayesian networks in practice turn out to be just naive Bayesian network models. Particularly well-known examples are things like spam filters. And like all naive Bayes models, they all have the same structure, where we have a parent node, which is the outcome we're trying to predict, whether or not an incoming email is spam, and where we have a number of child nodes, which represent evidence, such as whether the sender is on a prohibitive list or not, whether the title contains a particular word on a prohibitive list, there'll be multiple words like this, whether the body contains a link to a prohibited site, etc. And another very common use of naive Bayes solutions is in recommendation systems, such as that used by Amazon or Netflix, be it for films as shown here, or any TV content or books or consumer products, etc. Now, there are many obvious benefits of naive Bayes models. The most important is that they're computationally simple and very efficient to run, because the child nodes are conditionally independent which means that if the state of this is known, then each of these nodes are independent of each other. So none has any impact on any other. I'll shortly show you this with concrete examples. So if you think of this, the prediction node as being the hypothesis that we're trying to predict, and these as being evidence nodes, then because of this simple structure, you could do all the necessary calculations without a Bayesian network tool. You just need the following Bayes formulas. First, it's just Bayes' theorem with the evidence, and you normally have E here, but it's now the collective evidence, E1, E2, En, for any combination of observations of these EIs. And by Bayes, that's just equal to the probability of the evidence, given H, times the probability of H divided by the probability of the evidence. Because of the conditional independence assumption, this probability, i.e. the probability of the combined evidence given H, i.e. when H is known, is just equal to the product of the individual pieces of evidence given H. And we're still multiplying by the probability of H. Now all of these individual probabilities, you can either learn from data or use expert judgment for, they're the things which if you constructed the Bayesian net of this by hand, you'd be forced to put into the probability tables individually. So this is the information in that probability table, this is the information in that probability table, etc. And of course that denominator here, that probability of the evidence, is just, again, the product of the individual probabilities of EI given H times P of H, plus the product of the individual P of EI is given not H times the probability of not H. So that's just the standard formula for marginalization. Now critically, you could have thousands of these evidence nodes and you're still using exactly the same formula. And even with thousands of pieces of evidence, that calculation will run very, very quickly. So there's no issue about computational complexity or speed with a very large model here. Now while the model is fixed, all of the personalization is done in lookup tables for each user. Each time, say, a film is watched or liked, its relevant features, for example, its director or its different classifications, are added to the associated lookup table for that user. So all that's good, but unfortunately, a naive Bayesian network is almost never the correct causal structure for a decision problem, and I'm going to explain why using a very simple example. In this example, we have training data relevant for predicting whether a student will get an A grade in their exam for a particular master's degree module. The attributes are whether the student has a numerate degree, whether the student attends all the classes on the module. The training data for past students therefore looks like this. Now we could use a naive Bayesian network model structure to learn the necessary probability tables from the data. But it's just as easy to use an alternative, more causally natural Bayesian network structure and learn the probability tables for that. And I'm now going to show you how we do both. So here's a naive Bayesian network model structure. 
There's nothing in any of these node probability tables. So I've literally just defined the structure and nothing else. So what I'm now gonna do is learn the probability tables from a data set. And it's this data set. So you can see that the labels are the same as the labels in the nodes. So that's the data set I'm gonna pick up. So I simply go to the table learning here. It's that data, just say okay to this, run it. We can see what the probability table has learned here. It's learned some real stuff in there. It's learned stuff in there as well. And obviously it's learned this prior as well. So that's the naive Bayes and we've got the data learned. That's why you've got the D come up here. It tells you that's, that's learned from data. Now we'll go to the causal model. Again, the same thing, it's just the default structure. I've just simply created the model and done nothing to it. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing, learn from the same data set. Okay, run the model. And you can see that here, that just told us that 50% of the people in the data set attended classes and 50% had a numerate degree. But it's learnt this table here. I've got them both together here. So these are the two learnt models. And what you can see is that the marginals in both models are exactly the same. They look identical at this stage. It's learned that 23.75% of the students in the database pass their exam of an A grade in both cases, and that 50% of the students attend all classes, 50% had a numerate degree. So it's learnt, as you might expect, the same marginals. And interestingly, if we observe that they get an A grade, I'm gonna do this in both models, so you can see the effect in both models, the results are identical. But when we start to use the model for prediction, things start to change. Let's remove the observations, reset the model back to its prior state. What I'm gonna do this time is enter a true observation for attended all classes. What's happened is the prediction of the exam grade is the same, so it's gone up to 35% in each case. But in the naive Bayes model, the fact that that's been updated and we haven't got an observation in it means that it becomes more likely than before that this person will have a numerate degree. And that is clearly wrong from a causal perspective because these should be independent. And that independence in the causal model is preserved. There's been no updating to the numerate degree, which is what we would expect and require. And you may think, well, okay, well, what happens if we observe something over here now? This is false. And this is false. We've now got some conflicting evidence. How does the prediction handle that? Different results. Not very different, but different nonetheless. If they're both true, there's an even bigger difference now. This is predicting an A grade with 50% and this one only 48%. So the models clearly are different. Now you might think that the differences aren't sufficiently great to be worried about, but actually there are far more serious problems with the naive model. Let's remove these observations, reset the model, and this time I'm gonna observe that someone has got an A grade in both models. So we already saw that the models look like they're acting identically in this case. As you'd expect, both the probability it attended all classes and the probability of a numerate degree both increased. And they increased exactly the same in both models. But what would we expect to happen if we knew that one of these was false? If we knew that they didn't have a numerate degree, but they got A grade in the exam, what do we expect to happen to this? What should happen is that there should be an explaining away effect. If we know the student's got an A grade in the exam, and we know that contrary to expectations in that case, that they didn't have a numerate degree, then the explanation for their A grade must have been a higher probability of attending all the classes. So let's run the model in both cases and see what happens. So please look what happens to this probability and this probability. They both start at 73.68%. This one does not change in the naive model because as soon as that's known, these become independent. So anything about this doesn't impact on that at all. But in the true causal model, it does. We get the explaining away effect. The probability of attending all classes has increased as it should do. 
So it works in the causal model, but it fails in the naive Bayesian network model.